Hi kids, how are you all? Today I am going to narrate you a story. The name of the story is Pravara's wife. In Kashmir, there was once a rich and noble youth called Pravara. He started on a pilgrimage to see the world. Unfortunately, one day he fell into the hands of robbers who robbed him even of his clothes. Dressing himself in the discarded clothes of robbers, Pravara walked many days without food or sleep, and at last reached a strange city. It was night. Pravara was too proud to beg for food or shelter. No one offered him what he was ashamed to ask. He reached the king's stables near the city wall, found a pearl nearby, and lay down on it and fell to sleep. King Jayasena ruled the city. He had a charming and intelligent daughter called Kanchanavalli. On her attaining womanhood, the king stopped her studies and fixed up her marriage. The princess was not in favor of the marriage. She had always wanted to marry one who was her match in all respects. Rather than agree to this marriage, she wanted to run away from her home, see the wide world, and find a worthy man and marry him. To run away from home, she needed help. The minister's son was her friend and a close to her, so the princess secretly sent word to him, instructing him to wait for her near the stables with a couple of horses that very night. The minister's son was ready to help her, but he was prevented from doing so because his father insisted that he should attend a dance performance which was arranged at the palace. This same performance helped the princess to escape. She pretended to have a headache. When the royal family was engrossed in the dance, she climbed down the city wall by the help of a chain and came to the stables. It was very dark and she thought it was the minister's son that was sleeping on the pearl. She woke him up rudely saying, Get up! How can you sleep when there is so much to do? Go at once and bring two horses. We must be going. Pravara woke up heavy with sleep. He brought two horses from the stable. The princess got upon one of them and led the way asking him to follow her on the other. They travelled all night without a stop. The princess wanted to be as far away from home as possible before daybreak. She thought she could explain things to her companion next morning. By morning they arrived near a tank. Imagine the surprise of the princess when she turned to her companion and found that he was a total stranger. He looked more like a thief than anything else. She realized her mistake and felt like shedding tears. But there was no going back. Her father would order her to be killed mercilessly. The princess sat down on the ground and looked away from Pravara. Pravara did not attempt to speak her. He broke a couple of twigs from a tree and threw one of them before her so that she could brush her teeth. In silence, they finished their ablutions, mounted their horses and rode on till they came to a river. A ferry boat was about to cross the river. An aged woman was entreating the boatman to take her on the boat free of charge and the boatman was insisting on payment. Since Prevara too had no money with him, he looked at his companion. The princess threw a gold coin at his feet. Prevara gave this gold coin to the boatman and told the old woman to come along. After crossing the river, the old lady thanked Prevara. She mistook the couple to be wife and husband and offered herself as a cook to them. All right, granny, you can share our fate, Prevara told the imploring woman. By noon, they reached a city called Hilangar. They went to a chow tree, had food and rested there for the day. Next morning, Prevara went to the marketplace and offered to give the merchant daily predictions which would be profitable to them. A few merchants brought his predictions and he went back with some foodstuffs. The old woman cooked nice food and all the three ate it. The next day, more merchants brought Prevara's predictions for the day and they considered him a man of worth. Prevara had enough money now to take a house and live independently. Accidentally, one of the merchants one day found that Prevara was an expert in diamonds. He gave him a job on a decent monthly salary. Life was now very happy for the three of them. Only Granny wondered why the wife and husband never exchanged a single word. Being a wise old woman, she told herself, who can penetrate the mysteries of married life? 
One day a trader from the south brought an extraordinary diamond to the king of the city and offered it for a crore rupees. The king desired to possess this beautiful gem but he wanted to have the opinion of experts before paying such a huge price. So the diamond merchants of the place were called to the palace. They saw the diamond by turns and estimated its price variously from 75 lakhs to 2 crores. When it was Prevera's turn, he to examine the gem carefully and said, "The diamond is worth exactly 1 rupee." Of course, this is the charge for cutting it. As for the material, it is utterly worthless. This was a terrible slap in the face for the trader from the south. His reputation was shattered. He shouted, You should not say such things without proving them. To prove what he said, Prevera dashed the diamond against an iron plate and it was shattered into a thousand bits. The king was impressed by the wisdom of Prevera. That very day he appointed him as one of his advisers. Prevera justified the king's choice by giving him wise counsel on several occasions. A short while later the king's minister died and Prevera was given the post as there was none else more suited for it after Prevera became minister his private affairs became subject of general gossip one day the royal washer woman told the queen that the minister's wife was an uncommonly beautiful lady the queen in her turn told this to the king Prevera was a common man Before he was made a minister how could a common man have an uncommonly beautiful wife this puzzled the king also he wanted to see how beautiful his minister's wife really was to satisfy his curiosity the king devised a plan one day he invited his minister to dine with him the queen herself was made to prepare the food and serve it prevera understood the king's intention he must do to the king what the king did to him he could invite the king for dinner but how could he ask a strange lady to prepare food and attend upon his guest not knowing what to do prevara went home that night and lay in his bed when granny told him to come for food he said i am not hungry the princess guessed that something was troubling prevara and that in it concerned herself she said to the old woman tell him granny that if there is anything to be done it will be done Why should he go without food and worry himself? Hearing these words, Prevera was greatly relieved. He sat before his meal and said, "Granny, today the king gave me a dinner. It was prepared and served by the queen herself. It is not proper that we return the king's hospitality." "Tell him, Granny," said the princess, "that I too can prepare and serve good dishes. I shall not lag behind the queen." Next day the king was invited to dine at the minister's house the princess prepared very good dishes she served them to the king and went away before coming back for reserving she changed her clothes ornaments and even her hairstyle so that the king believed that the two different women attended upon him the king went home and told his wife our minister has two wives both are such beauties the queen had a great desire to see them so she suggested to the king let us invite our ministers and his wives to accompany us that day to the sea they too can take part in the ceremony of bathing couples accordingly the king extended an invitation to his minister to accompany him to the sea with his wives on the hardoya day Prevara was now in a worse plight than before. Preparing and serving food to a guest was one thing and taking part in the ceremony of bathing couples was another. How could he make such a request to the lady who was not his lawful wife? Prevara came home and lay down tormented by this problem. When the old lady came and called him to eat, he replied that he was not hungry. The princess said, "Ask him, granny, how it is that he loses his appetite so frequently? Does he not know that those who helped him once can help him again if necessary? He who protects can order too. It is not so." Prevara stopped worrying and sat before his meal. He told Granny about the king's invitation. Let him accept the invitation, Granny. Let seven closed palanquins be ordered and seven set of clothing and jewelry got ready. Let them set up 
a tent with seven entrances on the beach everything will be in order the princess said on the hardodaya day seven closed palanquins accompanied the minister's palanquin only one of them contained the princess kanchanavalli the seven palanquins were set down behind the tent with seven entrances from the first entrance of the tent the princess stepped forth and joined the minister on the beach they tied their clothes together according to the costume and bathed together then the princess went back to the tent soon she came out of the second entrance dressed and looking like a different person and repeated the ceremony with the minister she did the seven this seven times the king and queen who were watching this thought that seven different ladies came out of the dif, uh, out of the tent and bathed with the minister each one of them was a great beauty the next day the queen sent seven sets of gifts for the seven wives of the minister through her maid and instructed her to find out the names of all the seven ladies the maid arrived at the minister's house and requested for an interview with the minister's wives on instructions from the princess granny met the queen's maid and said i am afraid that the queen made a mistake the minister has eight wives one of them could not go to the sea because she was unwell their names are the same as those of the eight wives of lord krishna they avoid one another and you have to meet them one by one the queen's maid ran back and returned with an extra gift the princess came to her eight times each time in a different dress and conversed with her each time in a different voice and accent a few days later the princess instigated granny to serve food in excess while pravara was eating he protested to the la- old lady what is the matter with you today granny do you think that i have a bigger stomach today why are you serving me so much food tell him granny said the princess mischievously that if he cannot eat all the food there are others to finish off what he leaves over Now Pravara understood how the young lady was disposed towards him when the princess brought him pan of the food he asked her when are we going to get married she replied i left home in order to find a husband worthy of me in that very instant god has presented you before me but i was blind and mistook a gem for a glass bead i followed you only out of helplessness you never even looked at me can i hope to make a meet a nobler man you were not aware of it but in my mind i have been your wife for a long time now pravara was very happy to hear this he took the first opportunity of informing the king about his coming marriage the king heard to the full story of pravara's wife with unconcealed wonder and at last exclaimed what an extraordinary woman how is the story kids hope you liked the video so if you like the video share subscribe thank you